punchline, whose real name is Alexis K, became fascinated by the Joker's ideology while she was a college student. Starting a podcast discussing his crimes and beliefs, she eventually caught the Joker's attention. Unlike Harley Quinn, who was manipulated and seduced into madness, Alexis sought out the Joker and chose to adopt his anarchic philosophy of her own volition. Punchline and the Joker share a similar outlook on chaos, anarchy, and the dismantling of societal norms, forming the core of their partnership. Punchline is not driven by love or affection for the Joker, but by a genuine belief in his chaotic principles. The Joker respects Punchline's intelligence, ruthlessness, and unwavering dedication to his cause. She is portrayed as a cold, calculated killer, making her a repeating partner in crime. Unlike his relationship with Harley, which had elements of abusive manipulation, the Joker's relationship with Punchline is more of an equal partnership based on shared goals. Punchline serves as the Joker's enforcer and right-hand woman, taking on tasks that require precision, brutality, and lack of empathy. Her background in chemistry and her ability to create the detoxins make her a valuable asset to the Joker's schemes. In the major storyline, The Joker War, Punchline plays a crucial role in aiding the Joker's attempt to take over Gotham City. Her actions demonstrate her loyalty and effectiveness as his partner, highlighting her strategic thinking and ability to execute complex plans, solidifying her status as an indispensable ally. Punchline's arrival creates immediate tension with Harley Quinn, who sees her as a dangerous rival. Punchline views Harley as weak and overly sentimental, leading to several brutal confrontations between the two, further establishing her distinct identity and her dedication to the Joker's cause. Punchline's character continues to evolve, and her relationship with the Joker might undergo changes as new storylines develop. Her solo series explores her background and motivations, providing deeper insights into her character and her place in the Joker's world. Punchline's relationship with the Joker stands out due to its foundation on shared ideology rather than emotional manipulation, making her a unique and formidable presence in the Batman universe. As she continues to carve out her own legacy, Punchline's dynamic with the Joker may lead to new and unpredictable developments in Gotham City. Hey you everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today, we are going for a deep dive into Gotham's criminal underworld with these two major Batman villains released by McFarlane. The Joker and Punchline. Let's start with the packaging. The front of the box states DC Multiverse, The Joker and Punchline. It has a huge clear window that enables us to see the figures and all that comes with them. The right side of the box states McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, The Joker and Punchline. The left side of the box continues the clear window from the front and states McFarlane Toys, DC Multiverse, The Joker, and Punchline. Finally, the back of the box shows an amazing art of the two characters from the comics. That is it for the packaging, so let us crack this open and see if McFarlane did justice to these characters in action figure form. The Joker scales at 7.25 inches or 18.5 centimeters. Punchline scales at 7 inches or 18 centimeters. The figure comes with the standard McFarlane art card. 
with a short data file about the character at the back. Standard McFarlane base or stand with the DC logo. And the knife, which each of them are already holding right now. Now, I want to take note what I don't like about the punchline figure right now is that I don't know what that circle thing is. I thought it was a baseball or I don't know, maybe it's a bomb, but it is actually fixed on her hand. So from out of the box, she's holding this. I'll be honest, I haven't read anything about punchline. Uh, I'm uh, I'm already at that point wherein I already skip reading comics due to you know budget reason when this character was created. So I just know how how she looked based from the you know based from YouTube comic reviews or stuff like that. But I'm not really familiar on how this character works. So I don't know what that circle thing is. If it's a baseball or or a some kind of explosive, but if you are going to give us a uh, hand which is holding a fixed object, you know, they should at least provide us with an alternate hand that is not holding anything. Because now I don't have any option but to pose her holding whatever this is. And since McFarlane is no longer sticking the base and the art card on the background of the packaging, I guess we can also add this to accessories because this is actually a good uh, background diorama. Now let's have a quick look at the Joker figure because we all know that this is not the reason we bought this two pack, but the punchline one. Now this is uh I think this is a repaint of the Infinite Frontier Joker, which I don't really have. That's why I cannot compare it. Because for me, uh when I bought the Jokers in the three Jokers wave, those are already the Jokers for me. I stopped buying any other Jokers that McFarlane released after that. But this is actually a good addition. I'm glad. I'm glad that this is the the Infinite Frontier version mold is the one that they uh, that they use in this two pack because I kind I I kind I think this is a more casual looking Joker and this head sculpt yeah let's face it McParlin does good Joker head sculpt. I like it. So this is a good joker. In a more classic color, I guess, compared to the compared to the Infinite Frontier, uh Infinite Frontier Joker. And if I'm not mistaken, I think that Joker have uh lost one of his eyes. So I prefer this one to that one. Now for the articulation, you can do that and that. You can look down that far. You can look up that far. Okay, that looks weird. That looks pretty weird. So you can look like that. Just don't put it on the side because that just looks weird. Okay, and then you can do the t -pose. It doesn't have any of the standard McFarlane, you know, the cup here, which I don't miss because I don't really like that design. And I think without that, this actually moves more freely. So there, there's a, there's a bicep cut, double jointed elbow, Double peg wrist, 
Okay, so as far as the hand is concerned, that's good articulation. I think he has a cut here, but because of this design, uh, it doesn't it doesn't really matter. Yes, waist rotation. Is leg yeah, not that that articulation there is basically non-existent for the tie. He can kick that far. Can kick back that far. He can do the bend them that much. Double jointed knee. Then for the ankle, can do that. And he has toe articulation. So yeah, a pretty good, well articulated joker. Now let's go with the main event, punchline. Okay, as I said before, one of the things that I don't like is that they gave us something, a hand wherein she is fixed holding whatever this circle thing is. They should have given us an alternate hand for this one that is not holding anything. And then the 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 head sculpt is absolutely pretty, but considering that she's a villain, I think for villain's character, these are the these are the figures wherein they give us a more, you know, uh, more head sculpt that us uh, more expressive, like either angry or uh, is uh, or I don't know some something that will show that they are kind of evil, because this head sculpt, yeah, it is pretty, but I think it's like it's just it's just giving us a blank stare. It's like there's no one in there. Because looking at this art, okay, this, 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 this looking at this, I said, okay, this, this character has attitude. This doesn't show me any attitude. It's just like, it's a very blank head sculpt. Don't get me wrong. It is not, it is not a bad looking head sculpt. It is actually a, Pretty head sculpt, but I'm I'm more concerned with expression. It's like it's just she's just staring into blank into blank space. Anyway, I think this is a reuse. Okay, so I think some of this is still a reuse of the Catwoman mold, the Nightfall Catwoman, but some portions are new. For example, uh, I think this upper part of the torso is new because this is detailed. This detail is molded, so I think that's new. But this middle part, I think it's still the Catwoman mold because of that zipper line. The hands, uh, yeah, I think this is the cat, still the Catwoman mold. But I think this portion, the lower for the portion here is new. Now this is what I what well, this is what I was afraid of when I saw the promo pictures. I, I was afraid that this will prevent leg articulation. But they actually made a good decision here. They gave it a cut. They gave it a cut here, so she's more articulated because of that. Now, yeah, that's a good yeah, that's a good design by uh, decision by McFarlane. So she can do that, and she can actually do the split for the leg. I think these are new mold, and considering that this is actually sculpted detail, I think that's a new mold, and the leg is actually much better compared to the Catwoman uh, mold because that, that is wearing high heels with very thin portion here. But what I notice here is that he doesn't, she doesn't have any toe articulation. I actually like the design of this character. I don't know why there's a zero and X, but yeah.
I like the design of this character. I just really wish they gave us a more expressive head sculpt. And another good thing about this is that this, the X and O is also at her gloves. I can actually put, uh, I, I actually tried replacing this with a Catwoman uh, hands and it works. But the problem is that O will not be there. Overall, I still love this figure. I'm just really not a fan of the expressionless head sculpt. Now for some size comparison. Here they are with Hush Batman. Here they are with the newly released Robin Team Drake. Here they are with Nightwing. Here they are with Cassandra Kane Batgirl. Here they are with Rebirth Batman. Here they are with the newly released Connor Kent or Superboy. Here they are with Supergirl. Here they are with classic Al Jordan Green Lantern. Here they are with Black Star. And here they are with Classic Superman. Overall, uh, I think this is a good two pack considering the fact that this. Is I guess the first fig action figure of punchline that we get. If I'm not mistaken, uh, no other company has created a punchline figure yet. And unfortunately, I think McFarlane also knows that. That's why they didn't give us a hundred percent here. Because I mean, I know that there's a reason why they give us they gave us a hand with that is fixed holding that and the head sculpt is very expressionless. I, I won't be surprised if McFarlane is going to be releasing other versions of Punchline that looks way better than this one. So if you uh, if you guys are a gambling guy, um, I, I, I suggest that you just wait for it. If you are not, because if you are like me that is not satisfied with, the, with that expressionless head sculpt and you know, the lack of accessories. But I think as a two-pack, judging it as a two-pack, it is actually a pretty good two-pack because aside from punchline, this is actually a pretty good Joker. This is a good recaller of the Joker, make, give, giving the Infinite Frontier Joker a more classic look, a more classic uh, color, I mean. So I'll be honest, I was actually more happy when, when I was playing around with this Joker as compared to when I was playing with the punchline figure i don't know maybe maybe that's just me because I, I don't have any connection with the with the punchline character as i said i haven't read any comics about her i'm more into the batman i i am into batman and when you're a batman fan you're definitely a fan of the joker too i guess that's why i'm a little biased that when i opened it i did not expect that i'll be liking this joker a lot but yeah there's a lot of uh, decisions that they made on this figure that is also is still good for the punchline. For example, yeah, uh, I was worried that this leg articulation would be limited by the skirt, but it is not. That's a well-designed skirt. The, the cut on the side is a good decision.
So yeah, as a two pack, I guess it is a pretty good one. But I hope they release they release a punchline that has a better, more villainy head sculpt. You know, more villainy looking head sculpt. But before they do that, I'm not really in a hurry. Please, please, McFarlane, give us a more modern comic Harley Quinn. I mean, I can't believe that we actually receive, we actually got, you know, a punchline figure first before a modern age, a modern age comic Harley Quinn. Anyway, guys, uh, if you reached this part of my video, thanks a lot. Thank you for the support. If you love my videos, uh, please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. It will really help a lot. And as always, guys, enjoy life and keep collecting.